Hi guys, welcome to another segment of Meeting People. It's me, Eugene Lengman, your host. Hey, how are you guys doing? Right now, I'm at the Center for Advanced Energy Studies, also known as CASE. Today, we're going to meet the director, Noah Bakhtian, who is very inspirational, very outgoing. She has so much she's accomplished and she would like to share with us. So, you know what? Follow me. I grew up in Florida. Uh, I did my undergraduate degree at Duke University. I was a double major in mechanical engineering and physics. I decided I wanted to learn more about aerospace engineering. So I, under the Churchill Scholarship, I went to the University of Cambridge to do an MPhil or a master's degree. I got to do a lot of aerodynamics on low speed uh, bird, bird wings in a wind tunnel there. That was a really fun year. Um, after that, you know, it had always been my dream to go work at NASA. So I decided to pursue the rest of my academic career, my PhD, uh, in the States, in California. I found um, a position at Stanford University to do another master's and then my PhD. And I was doing most of my work out at NASA Ames Research Center, which is just about 20 minutes from Stanford University. The research I was doing there was in the Advanced Supercomputing Division at NASA Ames. Uh, and I was working on supersonic retropropulsion. Um, I would tell you the name of my thesis, but it might scare people. So I, I was basically just coming up with a, a, trying to come up with a new technology to land high mass missions on Mars using supersonic retropropulsion. So another great few years of my life, I'm um, working with some incredible scientists and researchers out at NASA. At that point, um, I decided I wanted to take a year off from academia to learn more about how decisions are made in our government in the United States. So I took a policy fellowship under uh, AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. They have a, a host of policy fellowships for STEM, mostly PhDs. Uh, and this particular one I got was offered by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. So I went out to Washington, D.C., and I served in the Senate as a policy advisor. Uh, and what's funny is that year, you know, I was hoping to be working on space policy, but uh, none of the members of Congress really were looking for a space person that year. A lot of them were looking for energy environment or other things. So I decided I was going to do a year in energy and environment. Um, I got that amazing 30,000 foot view of energy policy, environmental policy in the United States. And I was just so hooked that I said, heck, I need to stay in Washington, D.C. at least another year. So I took a, a follow on position at the Department of Energy. I worked in the Wind and Water Power Technologies Office at Department of Energy headquarters uh, in D.C. And I got to be the technical lead for the Wave Energy Prize and do a whole lot of other fun stuff. Uh, for DOE. At that point, I was offered the opportunity to move into the Office of International Affairs, and they wanted me to start up their program on the Energy Water Nexus. So I led that program for a little bit more than a year. Uh, more really great opportunities to start up uh, on this really impactful topic, especially right now in our history, on, on the interconnections between energy and water, not just in the nation, but also across the globe. Um, at that point, I actually was able to get a position in the administration, so I was working at the White House in the Office of Science and Technology Policy uh, on a whole host of energy issues, one of which was the Energy Water Nexus. Actually, at that point, we were calling it the Food Energy Water Nexus. I worked on the Arctic. Uh, I worked on energy innovation and just energy at large. Um, after my contract ended, I had to look for a new job, and that's when I was lucky enough to get a position here at the Idaho National Laboratory, the nation's lead nuclear laboratory. Uh, I am the director here for the Center for Advanced Energy Studies. It's a research, education, and innovation consortium that brings together the Idaho National Laboratory with the four public research universities of Idaho and Wyoming. So Boise State University, Idaho State University, University of Idaho, and University of Wyoming. And we concentrate here every day on collaboration, and that's why I just feel so lucky to be here. Because uh, I get to come to work every day to work with professors, with students, um, with our, our future, really, but also, on the other hand, with researchers at the National Lab, who are some of the best researchers in the world. Previous life was really mostly aer aerospace engineering, and 
I think what drove my passion for that was as a child just being enamored with the stars and astronomy. Um, being able to see a space shuttle launch from afar and honestly Star Wars. You know, I tell people that a lot, but it's true. Star Wars, watching those movies, they're just part of who I am, and I'm such a little Star Wars nerd. Um, but as far as the new energy environment track that I've taken recently, uh, I think the reason I've gone there is really understanding how important it is for our generation to be working on these issues, because really they're what are gonna impact the Earth, populations across the Earth, uh, national security, and just our future and our, our children's future. That's why I do what I do. I want to go to space. They do some really cool stuff. Uh, just the fact that they can do science out there, the fact that uh, we are advancing humanity's uh, reach into the solar system um, and, and possibly one day we'll become a, more of a space-faring species. We'll have people living in space. It's just such an incredible inspiration and the reason I wanted to go work at NASA. I think my advice to others would be, be ambitious, dream big, don't limit yourself, and don't give up. There's a great quote by Norman Vincent Peale, which is, shoot for the moon, because even if you miss, you'll land among the stars.